A pretty good example of this is Calvary Chapel. You know, I'm sorry to offend people who love Calvary Chapel, but Calvary Chapel is basically, they want to be Baptist without saying we're Baptist. So they're an undercover Baptist where they take Baptist off the sign, put a little picture of a dove, Calvary Chapel, sounds real non-committal, non-denominational, right? Okay, and then basically their emphasis is, you know, they're not going to preach. I mean, when was the last time some Calvary Chapel preacher was on the news or, or, you know, in hot water for preaching too hard? They keep it basic. They basically have a stated purpose of, hey, let's just keep it basic, stick with the basics, Christ alone and him crucified. It's all about reaching people with the gospel. Let's keep it real casual, real laid back kind of a Southern California mentality, Costa Mesa mentality, all right, OC style, and we're going to just, you know, uh, prophesy smooth things. And here's how that turned out now. Now, the Calvary chapels, half of them don't use the King James Bible anymore. And now, the Calvary chapels, founder Chuck Smith says, I think you might be able to lose your salvation. And so now you'll run into a lot of Calvary chapels where they literally believe that you can lose your salvation. Now, look, don't get me wrong. There are Calvary chapels where the true gospel is being preached because I've, I've gone soul winning in certain areas near a Calvary chapel where you'll run into the people who go to that Calvary chapel and you'll ask them about salvation and they'll tell you, I'm saved, I'm trusting Jesus Christ as my Savior, you know, it's not of works. I can never lose my salvation. And they're doctrinally sound. And they're using a King James. There are Calvary chapels out there that are like that. But then you'll go to other neighborhoods where everybody who goes to that Calvary chapel is telling you they don't know they're saved or it's work salvation or it's about, you know, turning over a new leaf in your life and all this type of junk and, and that believe you can lose it. That's something that you'll find in Calvary chapel now is a teaching that... Because look, and I know this because a lot of my cousins and aunts and uncles were involved in Calvary Chapel over the years. I've had familiars that were involved in Calvary Chapel. And when they heard this stuff about losing your salvation, they freaked out and they quit going to Calvary Chapel because they're like, whoa, what's going on here? Because they thought it was a Baptist type doctrine. You know, they thought it was the gospel by faith alone eternal security the believer, eternal life. Jesus will never leave us or forsake us. We're sealed unto the day of redemption. But you say, well, how can that happen? How can that? Because here's why. When you don't preach solid doctrine, deep doctrine, when you keep it shallow, what happens is you end up bringing in a bunch of unsaved people is what you end up doing. Half, you say, wasn't well, that great to bring in unsaved people? No, it's not great. We're supposed to go out and get people saved and then bring saved people to church. That's what the Bible actually teaches. It doesn't teach that the church is supposed to be this just gathering of a bunch of unsaved people to preach to and get them saved. So what happens is when you keep the doctrine vague and when you prophesy smooth and soft things and you don't go deep and you don't teach anything controversial and you don't preach hard, what happens is you're inviting sin into the church you're inviting false doctrine into the church and false teachers. That's why a lot of these Calvary Chapel pastors, they were able to come in and go through that whole system and come out teaching that you can lose your salvation. Others went through the system and taught that you couldn't lose it because they already believed that before they went in to Calvary Chapel. And listen, people that are at Calvary Chapel, I, like I said, some Calvary chapels that are actually preaching the Bible, the King James Bible, and that actually believe in the eternal life that Jesus promised us, you know, but here's what they are, babes in Christ, because they don't get any strong meat. Because they don't want to offend. So yeah, okay, there are people there that are babes in Christ, and they're going there, and they're learning stuff, but it's time to graduate to big boy church. <laughs> time to put on the big boy pants and come down to Faithful Word Baptist or come down to some other independent Baptist church and actually, you know, crack open Jeremiah chapter 20 and have it actually mean something to you. Because right. when you're walking around all day in a Hawaiian shirt and flip-flops just saying, hey, man, 
What's happening, bro? Everybody's cool, man. Hang loose, baby. <laughs> now, look, I'm all for hanging loose, but not when it comes to doctrine. Yeah. I don't want to hang loose doctrinally. <laughs> I don't want my doctrine to be far out. <laughs> okay, you know, look, there's a time to hang loose, and there's a time to tighten things up yeah. in the house of God and preach hard and get serious. And not have this lackadaisical, laid back, super relaxed. Look, there's a time to put on a Hawaiian shirt. There's a time to put on flip-flops. Many have seen me in flip-flops. But you know what? There's a time to get serious and to rip some face. You, you can't, listen, you can't be everybody's buddy all the time and be a preacher. Listen to what the Bible says, my friend, in the New Testament. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. I don't know how to make it any clearer than God's word just made it right there. If you're a friend of the world, you're the enemy of God. I don't know what else to say, my friend. That's what the Bible says. So if you want to get along with everybody, you're basically saying, you know what? I want to go out of here and start a church and be at enmity with God. Because I want to get along with all the people in my community. No, no, no. There are going to be people in your community that are going to want to put a brick through your window if you preach right. And if nobody wants to put a brick through your window, you're not preaching right. right. 